What's good, y'all? Welcome back to the first episode of Closet Talk. It's a series that Raylene suggested that we do, and we're going to try it and start it and see what you guys like. I feel um, like it could go far, and one day we're going to be in a badass closet. No, I really think it could. So Closet Talk, let's just break it down. Before we do that, um, if you guys are new to our channel, never seen our face before, hit that subscribe button, turn on post notification bell, on so you're notified every single time we post a recently video so the cool thing about closet talk is uh paula's asleep right now and we don't have to like speak with crazy energy and wake him it's up just chill because this is just chill vibes it reminds me of like being like younger even to this day like you go to your closet sometimes and you're just like okay i need to hide and like get away i um, guess it's like a vulnerable how do you say vulnerable, vulnerable. like space and area and it's crazy because when I thought of this, he was at a soccer game one night and we had just had Apollo. So like being a mom of three was super fresh. And so, or even being parents of three. And I remember I was like, he came home and I was like literally in here. The kids were all asleep and I couldn't be loud or have the lights on in the bedroom because Apollo was sleeping with us. And I was like trying to get my life together and I was writing out our calendar for the month. And he's like, what are you doing? Like, we're just sitting in here for no reason. I was like, we should do like closet talk. But yeah, that's yeah. where this idea came from. So we're just gonna like, closet talk is gonna be about just obviously, like she said, vulnerable topics, um, personal topics, anything that's going on in our life, anything that's going on in your guys' life. Um, and just like advice, if you guys yeah. ask us advice, like DM us questions or whatever, and we'll just jot them down and um, make sure that we answer them on the first, or on the next episode or the next video of Closet Talk. It's almost like a podcast, but not like no, not mic'd really. up and stuff like yeah. that. We're just talking. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna update you guys with what's going on in our life right now or what we're dealing with at this moment. I'm not gonna give names, no nothing, but so, no, say the name. No, <laughs> not yet, because I haven't even went over there yet. But there's this app called ShareGrid or this website called ShareGrid. And so when you don't have like certain camera equipment, you rent from there. And so with Raylene's last photo shoot for Vega, we needed a certain lens for the beauty shots. Mm -hmm. And so I rented a lens, boom, went and picked it up, went to the photo shoot, um, and then did our things, whatever, went to go pick up the girls, yeah. went to my mom's, came back here at night. Once we got back here late at night, I got a notification on my phone saying that an air tag has been tracking our location. First thing that came to my mind was Raylene was out or something, someone slipped air tag in her purse or whatever, like the mm -hmm. girls in their backpacks. So like I started getting like super paranoid. And I'm trying to find this air tag. So I go on, I click on the location and it shows me exactly where the air tag started. Like where the exact like AirTag with Apple, they're super precise on location. It's not like you know, like find my iPhone, it shows you like the kind of the area mm -hmm. or like stuff like that. Sometimes it's pretty precise, but so I see that it came from when I rented the lens. And so I'm like automatically thinking, oh, this is a weirdo trying to track our location. And even if, even if I'm over exaggerating and they're doing it just because they want to know where their lens is at. Number one, there was nothing in the contract or the email confirmation or when I went there letting me know that the, lo the lens is going to be tracked. So I went in the box and in the back of the foam, the air tag is just sitting there like hidden. And so I call the guy, we get in a big, huge argument. I'm pissed off at the point. So I'm like, I'm not going to say anything that I don't, that I won't, that I'll regret. So I just hung up on him and he just ended the call, like basically telling me that I'm paranoid and this is 2024 and you're always being tracked. And I was, I just asked him if he had kids and he was like, no, I don't. And I was like, all right, then like, mm -hmm. don't tell me that I'm paranoid for making sure that my family's safe and just, exactly. Just it would be different if you gave them your consent, like, okay, I know I'm being followed. And I would have. Exactly. As long as I know, like, because... It's different when, like, you don't know. Because that's kind of scary. You never know what people's intentions are, especially nowadays. Like, people are crazy. Yeah. And, and there's so much S-word trafficking, you know? Mm-hmm. So, you just never... And we have daughters. We have a son. Like, yeah, no. 
So, uh, I got like all my facts straight. Like I went on the share grid policy website, like on the policies and it nothing, facts. nothing consents anybody to be able to do that mm-hmm. unless they let us know. Yeah. And it's in the law. It's, and so but when you called the guy, he even admitted, he was like, I've never had people call and complain about this. Like he admitted that like, okay, well, he's like, well, next time it'll be in the paperwork or something like that. I'm like, bro, it's too late so, like, now. He so. knew, yeah, he knew that what he was doing was wrong. I'm going to drop off the lens later today and I don't know how it's going to go, but I'll update you guys on how it goes because yeah. I'm definitely not going to bite my tongue. And the thing is, too, is, like, he was getting rude that you were upset about it. And it's, like, you have every right to be upset. Like, there was no, like, no one said anything about being trapped. Yeah. So, hopefully so. he just can understand from, like, you. And we're getting our view. money back. Oh, my gosh. I'm getting that back for sure. But um, there's a couple topics that you guys want us to talk about. And we're going to get straight into it. Get into it, y'all. Childhood talk. What about it? Child- what about our childhood? <laughs> childhood talk. Like, how did you grow up? Broke. You want you want me to go <laughs> first? Yes. Uh, so I've always lived in Phoenix. Um, I grew up on the south side of Phoenix. If you guys know where it is, grew up on that side of town. Um, I'm like all like that, trauma <laughs> in that area, and uh, I grew up with obviously. My siblings, Justice and Jersey, and then my mom and Dida, which is, if you guys know, that's my stepdad. Um, and he's been in my life since I was one. Yep. <laughs> same with me, with Myla and Ileana, literally mm-hmm. the same ages. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily say like we were broke, but there was definitely mm-hmm. times to times where like we struggled and we knew that like our parents were struggling and you were making ends meet. Yeah. And um like Same. we literally lived in a in uh did as dad's laundry room, like all five of us. Imagine our laundry room and five of us living in there. That's crazy. You know what's crazy though? Like I would have never thought. Mm-hmm. But like there are times that we were down bad, but I feel like my dad always like we always had a roof. We always had a room. Sometimes we would be like searching the house for pennies and stuff to like pay bills, but my dad all and my mom always made sure like we had a room. You talking about the toilet paper? Oh my gosh! Sometimes we would be really like, this is so crazy. We would be so down and out to where like my dad like he would take us to QT, and you know how like they have those things where you like clean the car? <laughs> he would make us take the napkins that you use to wipe your windows, and we would have to use that as toilet paper. Imagine using hard ass brown paper towels for your ass, like. I remember like the oh first time I was able to like spend my own money on good toilet paper. Mm-hmm. Oh, so happy. <laughs> I'm like, should I get the cotton with the stripes? <laughs> Oh, get the grit, get the little riddle, the ripples in there no, and shit. No, literally. Or I remember we would, um... Wiping your butt with tracing paper. Yeah. No, seriously. Or I would remember, I would remember we would go grocery shopping and my mom used to, like, coupon and she would do this thing. It was called, um, price matching. So, like, if something was $2 at Fry's, you price match and you'll get it get for it $2 for at Walmart. And so we would go to Walmart, no dead ass. Like we would literally have to sit there at the table and write everything out, circle the ad. But I remember we'd walk around Walmart and this is so bad. We would literally get the popcorn chicken. (laughs) And not pay for it. We would walk around and eat the popcorn chicken. I would get the candy from like Walmart. What happened to the candy at Walmart? What candy? Like they would always, they would have the yeah, the candy in like a circle and you get to like pick it, yeah. <laughs> but they probably noticed like yeah. everybody was Everyone's just going in there just and eating. It, eating but it if you really store. think about it, like that's so unsanitary. Like no one cared about I know, that but stuff I'm saying like, then. it's so unsanitary. Like yeah. it's still the same germs yeah. nowadays and it wasn't back then. Yeah. But it's just now everything got a name for it. Yeah. And then uh, I moved to like the West side, like Avondale area. Uh, during high school, mm-hmm. I went to Alfreya, and I went to Westview. 
graduated there and then I went to college and yeah. I remember though, like literally I could not wait to turn 16 because I knew as soon as I turned 16, that very next day I went and got a job and I ended up getting hired at Rue 21. That was my first job and I would basically work to like help provide for like me and my sister and then like I would help out with the house and I would like help my mom and dad like buy groceries or put electricity because they had the they have the SRP box. So I would like be like, oh here's some money for electricity or I bought me and my sister's school clothes and lunch today. But I couldn't wait to turn sixteen to get a job. And then I don't I've been know, what's crazy is like when I did have like borrows and all mm -hmm. those jobs, like I really don't <laughs> remember what I spent the money on. Like I really, BS. I really don't remember like until you worked at Olive Garden and like I worked a lot, like and when I was at Barrows and Baskin Robbins, like I was, I worked every day really? like after school when I didn't. I worked the days that I didn't have soccer you practice. Food? No, I don't even remember what I spent my money on. Like I, I really don't. I always spent my money on like makeup, clothes for me, and my sister. Like, I didn't make no big purchases. A, not only that, but my parents both work, so sometimes when we were getting out of school, like especially in high school we would have to like literally waste time for a good hour or two when we'd get out of school so we would walk to like the burger king right there by westview we would sit there and eat or we'd go to that mcdonald's or like colados i know the girls i i already know that the girls are gonna have like best friends in high school where like they need ride home rides home every day and stuff like that I my goal is to make sure that if we can't pick them up they have a car that they can drive each other or something because well we're gonna be able to pick them up like well yeah i know that but i'm just saying like we were literally walking around going to freaking mcdonald's and crap like that but then again like it wasn't that scary i feel like as the years keep going by everything just keeps getting so much it sucks scarier. because i wish like the girls would be able to experience the stuff that we experience like playing kids. outside in the street until the lights come on you can't even do that no more oh, so the lights by, turn on Soup your kids. You gotta run your ass home. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how we like grew up. Yeah. Not but like super struggle, bad, but of course like yeah, struggling. Exactly. But those are like the best stories too, low key. And they make you grateful for like where you're at now because yeah. Um let's see. Being where you are at your age with the kid or with kids, I'm a young dad of three. Not many know the price. What does that mean? Uh, I don't know if he's talking about like the price as in like having to change your schedule or price as in like literal money. I'll say both. So money, I don't think it's like, I don't know. Sometimes, yeah, it does get like super pricey. pricey because when you do go out to eat, you're not just eating for two, you're eating for five. And like, as the kids get older, it's the more they eat too. So it's like when the girls go out, like you know most of the time they have their own meals it's Honestly, only, it's very rare when they share a meal yeah exactly because the girls are so freaking like blessed and lucky like our daughters will ask them like, what do you guys want to eat literally they're like i want fried octopus or i want some sushi or can i have some filet and i'm like like shit when i was asked that what I ramen i was scared to ask for a freaking hot and spicy from mcdonald's i'd be like dad let's just go get a hot and spicy it's only a dollar but they are very lucky. Yeah. The it can get pricey. Yeah, it Especially when it comes to school stuff. Like, you know, now we have to pay pricey. for both of the girls. Soon we'll be paying for three kids. Like, school clothes, activities, all but that But we stuff. did, like, so now that we have three, it's the girl, like, the kids, they get a birthday party every other year. So they're not getting a birthday. We used to do it every year they get a birthday party. But now we're doing every other year they get a birthday party just so, like, they kind of have something to look forward to mm -hmm. and they get to this year illy wanted a small like birthday gathering so that way this summer we're gonna take them because myla's a summer baby so her birthday's this summer but so that way we'll just take them to like a trip so we also want to teach them like you guys can't always have like it's the biggest parties you can't always just have whatever you want you know what i mean we don't want to teach them like oh, I know I'm going to have a big party and there's going to be this and this and this. Like, no. You guys need to learn that, you know, stuff does cost and it doesn't matter if we do or don't have the money to do it. 
they need to like learn the value and be like okay like we can't always just have these big parties or have whatever we want we can't get something from the store every time we go to the store because then they're gonna be brats (laughs) apollo's waking up right now Mm -hmm. so he's gonna be making some noise um and the price as in like schedule change i mean yeah like kids have a routine when it comes down to school and Mm -hmm. stuff like that so it's kind of I don't know it's kind of easy on our end I would say just because like our job is like we can work from our computer and from our phones and stuff and our camera and so we're able to like kind of work around that but so I can't really say like how the schedule changes from someone that works a nine to five I don't we haven't really experienced that with three kids yeah I've experienced it with two but it was super like draining it was literally a routine like a routine every day there's times where i'm just like uh like i would want to cry in the morning because i'm like it's just again and again and again and again and then doing it by myself too it was just sometimes it would just be super overwhelming did it ever get rough that you guys thought of splitting up there's only there's I'm, it's only been like once there's literally mm-hmm. not like it's only been one time mm-hmm. that we both asked each other like what do you want to do and it was a while back, like a long time ago, but like two. It was just we couldn't agree on something or like on a couple things, and it was just getting frustrating. But we both, I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, I can't speak for her, but I realized like I'm not trying to like give up. We put so much time into our relationship already that like mm-hmm. there's no point in just like what well, I'm not starting over. Like, and it's yeah. so funny, like, because people are like, oh, after, like, my fourth girlfriend or fourth wife, I'm not starting over again. Mm-hmm. It's my first girlfriend, first fiance, and I'm not giving no energy again <laughs> if we were to ever, God forbid, but. If we ever split, you would so move on. I wouldn't. No, like, I'm not saying I wouldn't move on. Oh, okay. I was going to say, like, boy, you know damn well. I'm saying, and it depends on, like, how we split, too, like. If it was something I did, I don't think I would move on. If it was something that you did, probably moving on the next day. But this is gonna be a hoe. Nah, I'm saying like mentally. Oh, I'm thinking like girls. Yeah, no. But if we like ever came to like a mutual agreement, I feel like we'd be great like co-parents, and we would figure it out. Yeah. Because we share a lot of stuff, so we'd be like, okay. No, that's my deodorant. I'm taking that shit. <laughs> You're stupid. But we really do. I don't picture it at all, though. Me either. Like, I don't. I don't see us with anybody else. But how to keep the spark in the relationship? How do you think we keep the spark in the relationship? How to keep the spark in a relationship? Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's definitely times. Like I'm not saying like there's not like there's a like love fades. I don't think it fades at all. But I think there's like we're not like. I feel like. It doesn't fade, but it definitely, like... Should I go I don't, get them? Yeah. Good. Like, I don't want to say, like, the love will fade, because I feel like you love them and you want to fix things and stuff like that. So, like... But it does get, like... I guess you could say... Damn, I don't even know how to explain this. I guess maybe... I don't know. But, like, I know, like, when you're... Because of experience, when you're not pouring into each other or, like, keeping the spark and stuff like that, I just feel like... You just feel not as like important you know what i mean like i don't know how to say it like you don't feel came to join closet loved or oh my god ew why am i doing that to my feet <laughs> you don't feel important um i'm trying to like explain it but i don't know how to explain it i don't yeah the, like... the really the relationship starts to die and eventually it's just not gonna work out if you're not like keeping the spark and like pouring into each other like long story short it's communication point, point. too like you guys point, gotta point, have those talks simple. to where you let each other know like what's been bothering you because it's 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 impossible like we're talking about a spark okay i know we're but i'm talking s- about no i'm saying like it's impossible to like bro you just threw me off my like you threw my whole track off okay well it's impossible to have a perfect relationship to where nothing ever bothers anybody that's what they're saying how do you keep the spark alive you talk about things that's not it. That's I mean, that's not, how that's my, not, that's my love language. Me, see, <laughs> so me, Bro. I feel like to keep the spark alive in a relationship, you still go on dates, you still like 
flirt and do cute stuff that you did in the beginning or like to get the girl or to get the boy I feel like that's what sparks the relationship or like just cute little like just gestures did you say that yeah just I'm I'm bad with vocabulary and little messages but, like let me know when you're there or uh have a good day or See, I'm proud ours, of you our things are like two different things like I'm more of like the lovey-dovey like romantic side and his is more of like the just real life shit like let me know you got there safe or just talk to me bro whenever you send me like if you send me a question or if you send me a message like i'm proud of you or let me know when you're there or have you made it yet bro that just like butterflies that makes you like <laughs> see and that's not for me for me it's more of like hugs um plan a special date or cuddle and watch a movie with me what else just hug me randomly mm. all the cute stuff that's what makes me be like oh. they said will we ever leave our town and start over i would be down bro i'd be so down like and bro we'd miss our family so much but and we would be like i don't think we would do it until the girls got a little bit older <laughs> and i think he agrees <laughs> bro i've always wanted to live Sorry if it's not focused on our face, guys, because he's in front of me. But I've always wanted to live like somewhere far, like or somewhere random, like Montana or. And it sounds so funny because when you say a state like that, you think there's nothing out there, but we don't know. Like we have. He haven't, wants like green and like land. Like just land. Like I want to live on a freaking lake to where our boat is sitting right there, and. Mm -hmm. Bro. I feel like one day we will. And the closest lake out here is... Lake Pleasant. <laughs> bro, an hour away. I'm not doing that. Yeah. Because you could live on the lake and the next grocery store be two minutes away. Like, mm -hmm. in different... In other states. You want both the phones? Okay, One go One for ahead. the hose. Uh, entrepreneurship and starting a business slash brand advice. Do's and don'ts as a couple and individuals. Starting a brand. What's your advice? I would just say put a lot of thought into it because this is something that you know you're creating and doing so like it's definitely something you should take your time with and not rush it like I've wanted to do I've wanted to do Vega for so long literally since like 2021 and I just really never like put a lot of thought and actually did it and I felt like every time I would try to, like, I just felt like I was rushing something or I was trying to, like, just hurry up and do it so I can say, like, oh, I have a brand. And that's what I didn't want. And I, everyone would be like, when are you going to drop lashes? When are you going to drop lashes? And I'm like, I don't know, because I really just want to sit back and think on it and figure out what I really want to do. And I also wanted to be in the right headspace when I do it. And just when the time was right, I wanted to because... I just didn't want to feel forced like I'm doing it and it's not like something I wanted to do at the moment and it's not something I wanted to like, you know, just put out there. Starting a brand, yeah. Yeah. Don't rush it. That's literally the main key. Don't rush it. And don't look at the numbers. Exactly. Because it'll get to the numbers that you want it to get to. But Slowly but surely. It's not realistic. Someone's going to just sell out millions of dollars worth of inventory their first drop um hi i'm so hungry my stomach's growling someone said this box isn't big enough to fit my question or scenario i should have said dm me <laughs> what's something that what me and my say. significant other do if we don't believe in marriage Ooh, i you got a good you don't have to get married you could just say your vows no that's part of marriage that goes into marriage i know but they could just say their vows like That's... i promise to do this i promise to do that like yeah, i guess you're not having like someone marry you but you're still like given a promise so do you not believe in promise rings either if you uh, if you ask that question yes i do if you no i'm saying if i'm asking them oh. if you ask that question comment down below what like elaborate a little bit more on that because I don't think you have to be actually married to be with each other because there's a lot of people that really don't believe in marriage and their relationships have lasted so long and they were like, you know, so great. 
but um, my parents never actually got married. They were just together for like 23 years because they both didn't. Well, my mom wanted to get married, but my dad just thought that just threw up getting married was like a, just Ooh, a piece warm. of paper. But they always said they were married. They always were like, oh, my wife, my husband. And they also were like super like skeptical about it. They're like, I feel like when people get married and sign a paper, it's just, uh, it's going to jinx the relationship. And I'm like, I don't know. That's what they believed. I have always been a hopeless romantic. So I've always been like, I want the, I want to be married. I want the paper, all of that. Mm. But I think that was just their excuse of not getting married. <laughs> like on paper. Seriously, dude. Mm. He got the hiccups. He got the hiccups. Feeling lost in your 20s. That's so normal. Yeah. It's so, so normal. Because a lot of like people around me and even myself sometimes like, bro, I'm only 24 and sometimes I feel like I'm not doing enough and I need to get a lot of stuff in, in track and like, bro, just because we pick up a camera and we post and we get views doesn't mean that we don't deal with real life shit, like credit and like debt and stuff like that. And so it's normal to do that. Like a lot of us look up to these 40, 50 year olds and they're all talking about like, oh, I'm doing this and I, and I have this successful business and stuff. I promise you they did not start in their 20s. 95% of them did not start in their 20s and 95% of them didn't have their shit together in their 20s. Mm -hmm. If you look up like all the big designer brand, uh, like owners ages and stuff or big companies ages, like the, the CEO's ages, bro, they were old when they started their business. I also feel like um, you can't really compare yourself. Everything's gonna happen when it's supposed to happen for you. Apollo you agree? agrees. Yeah. He's sitting up now, guys, by himself. Tell them. Yes, exactly. But yeah, I mean, that was like about the questions. All the other questions are they tie into the topics that we just talked about. So obviously, this is the first episode of Closet Talk. So. You, it's obviously going to get way better and, you know, we'll have more submissions. We'll eventually answer it. But we love you guys. And this dude is probably hungry. And so we're going to feed him some food right now. He's eating food. Yeah? He's like, I'm tired of sitting down. He's eating some food right now or eating some food now. So we're going to get you some chicken or potatoes or something like that. Yeah? Love you guys so much. If you guys are new to our channel, you never seen our face before, hit that subscribe button. Turn that bell on so you're notified every single time we post a recent rave video. Love you guys and we out this thing.